Okay, so it's been a while since I did any problems on the dialogarithm, and so today I thought I'd revisit it and we'd look at a problem, the dialogarithm of minus i. This is really similar to a series problem I did a while back where we ended up with the dialogarithm of just i. Now for the dialogarithm, we've got our definitions over here to the right. First, we have our series definition up top, which we can use for this one. Also, we have our integral definition. So for starters, what we'll do is we'll just, we'll plug into this series definition. So for dialogarithm of minus i, we'll just plug it right into the formula. It's going to become minus i to the n here. And then what I'm going to do is let's just expand this out and see what we have. Starting when n is 1, we're going to, first term is going to be, we'll write it like minus i over 1 squared. Yeah, I'll write it like 1 squared just so we can see what's happening. And then for the second one, when n is 2, when we square this, the negative becomes just positive. We get i squared, but that's negative 1. So we have minus 1 over 2 squared. It could be easier to break this up. You could write this as minus 1 to the n times i to the n. Because usually what you do is you memorize your powers of i. So like for i to the 1, of course, that's i. For i squared, it's negative 1. For i cubed, it's minus i. And for i to the 4th, you just get a 1. And then, of course, this is just going to repeat over and over again. So now for the n equals 3, we're going to have i cubed, which is minus i. And then we're going to have a minus 1 in front. So this becomes a positive i over 3 squared. And then for the n equals 4, i to the 4th is going to be 1. The minus 1 minus the 4th, an even power becomes a 1. So we end up with just plus 1 over 4 squared. But then from here, the pattern is just going to continue. We can look at one more set up to 8 real quick. And so what's happening is our denominators are just counting up. 1, 2, 3, 4, on to infinity. And then the numerators are just repeating with this pattern over here. Now for the next step, what I can do is we can separate out the real part for the imaginary part. We'll notice that, let's just, we'll just notice that all the even terms, those are going to be real. And all the odd terms are going to be imaginary, right? So first I'll capture all the real terms. What I'll do is, you know, because they're all even, I can factor this first term out. I can factor out minus one fourth on here. And when you do that, what's gonna happen, you're gonna get one minus one over two squared plus one over three squared minus one over four squared. You could look at this right here as a one squared. So this is just gonna be Counting up, alternating signs, on and on to infinity here. And then for the imaginary terms, let's let's factor them. Let's factor the minus, we'll factor out a minus sign too. So a minus i. And then doing that, what's gonna happen really similar. But instead of having all terms, we're gonna have just the odd terms, you'll notice. Be, well, because they're all odd. So what's gonna happen? We'll have this will become 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared minus 1 over 7 squared on to infinity. But now you may recognize the pattern here. This right here is set up in the form of the eta function. We look at the very similar to the Riemann zeta function, except we've got alternating signs. We look at the exponent here. So this is actually going to be the eta function at 2. Eta function at 2 has a well-known value, not pi squared over 6. It's pi squared over 12 for this thing. And then for this thing here, really similar, but we're missing the even terms. We still got alternating signs. This thing is going to be the Dirichlet beta function. Again, the exponents are 2. We could look at this as 1 squared. So all the exponents are going to be 2. So this is actually Dirichlet beta at 2. But this is the same value as Catalan's constant, which I've seen it written with a G. I've seen it written with a C. And I think that's all. But Catalan's constant is something like 0 0.9164723. Okay, actually... Okay, actually, I made up a lot of those decimals or I was way off. But well, I got the first, it's 9159, so that's pretty close, but the rest of it was made up. So we got something like that for Catalan's constant. And so let's come up here and I'll just summarize what we have here for this value. So all we're going to need to do on it is distribute in minus 1 fourth to pi squared over 12. And what we get is minus pi squared over 48. Here, minus i times Catalan's constant. We'll just write this as minus ig or gi or ic or whatever you want to however you want to do it and that's it and so one thing i was thinking about when doing this was the exponents we have over here 
you'll notice that minus i is the same thing as i cubed, of course. So it's actually going to be very easy for us to find any integer exponent on i. So like in that other video, we found the logarithm of i really similar to this. I think it was, let's see, it was pi squared over 48 minus ig. So just the difference in a minus sign there. And then if we did, let's say we wanted to do the logarithm of i squared. Well, that's just going to be the logarithm of minus 1. And for minus 1, that actually has the value of minus pi squared over 12. I derived both these values in previous videos. I'll provide a link to the die logarithm class where you can get some of these other values. I'm gonna add some more values too, but I did, I think I did all the easy real values because let me make a little space here. So now, like we just said, for die logarithm of i cubed, that's just die logarithm, that's the same thing as minus i. So this is what we just found, minus pi squared over 48 i g. And then last, die logarithm of i to the fourth i to the fourth just one, and the di logarithm of one is actually just pi squared over six. And so if you keep going, you want di logarithm of i to the fifth, you're back to this value, and it's just going to repeat. And so that's about it for this one, but coming up, we'll do some more identities and some more, we'll get some more values, especially for real numbers. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.